and welcome back just wanted to put this out there before we begin the video that in this episode we are dealing once again with a part of the fuel system in this case uh, more more specifically the fuel tank but as with dealing with any part of an automotive fuel system or any fuel system for that matter please make sure that you're taking appropriate precautions and being safe thank you and welcome back so uh, in the last video we diagnosed either uh, it's a weak slash failing fuel pump however you want to call it but uh, it's an item that we know we need to fix whether it fixes all our problems or not is yet to be seen but it is an item that we're going to chase down so what we've done so far is remove the rear driver side fender liner uh, so we can get to our fittings here and kind of disconnect things and uh this line you see here, so I'm hitting with the flashlight. This is a vent tube that goes up to the filler neck. And as fate would have it, uh, that tube was actually already just kind of flopping on the top of the tank without having to remove it. And you can take two guesses as to why. That's the fitting that should be attached to the top of the tank that was broke off. Now, it's just a vent line that allows you to fill the tank. It allows the tank to breathe so you can put fuel in it. Um, if this was blocked off or anything with your uh, your venting system in general was, was messed up on your tank, then you'd have trouble filling it. But uh, so it's, it's not uber critical, uh, but it is something we need to look and see if it's uh, easy enough replaced on the tank once we get the tank dropped or if it'll take a replacement tank in order to get this one fitting replaced. I don't know. We shall see. But again, we found that piece broke, which was inside of this end of this vent tube, and we just took we just took it out. These uh, green plastic clips you see, they've got these little clips on the side of it that you kind of depress in, and you'll see one here still on this line fitting here. Once you depress in and pull these clips up. You can then kind of get that fitting off. Uh, this looks to be a vent line for the charcoal canister. I won't be able to confirm that until we drop the tank, but it's easy enough removed from this canister here, which is riveted right to the bottom of the fill neck. And of course, that's our main uh, fill neck right there. And if you look down inside that pipe, that looks nasty. Somebody, somebody's been playing. Somebody dumped something inside that fill line. Let's see what we, oh yeah, look at that. And you see those crystals? I got a pretty good idea what that is. Anybody, anybody need a little sugar for their coffee? Take a look at that. Actually, you're seeing this for the first time I'm seeing it. Hopefully, let me get some light in there so you can see that. There we go. There's a good shot of it. Let's see, you see that? It goes all the way down that fill neck. This bad boy has got sugar in the tank. So whoever stole it wanted to leave a nice little going away present. Which is kind of interesting because, and I haven't showed you this yet. Check that out. Locking fuel cap. And of course, we don't have the key, but there are several example videos online already that shows how we can get around that. So explain to me how a car that, or a truck that was theft stolen and recovered looks to have sugar all down the main fuel neck. Uh, so I don't know what do you do you steal a truck you droid ride with it you have fun with it you fill the tank up full of sugar and then you put a locking gas cap on it to spite people who the hell knows at this point and pardon my French but that's interesting so we're definitely gonna have to get this tank dropped and get it cleaned out now interesting fact if you've ever researched this online sugar will not dissolve in gasoline it will settle to the bottom of the tank um uh, exactly actually and if you just if you google it if you youtube youtube search it you'll you'll see what i mean there's several example videos 
you'll see you'll see where maybe a little bit of the sugar will dissolve but in general the sugar will actually stay undissolved on the bottom of the gasoline and never move anywhere the reason why you're seeing it inside that fill neck there is because you know all the liquid has dried up and the, the sugar has kind of recrystallized itself Oh, so this will be fun, which means I'm not going to be able to get a siphon down in there easily to get this tank drained. So what we're going to have to do is partially drop this tank, disconnect the rest of the lines, uh, and then siphon the tank out. Uh, just crack the fuel pump loose and get it out of there enough where we can uh, siphon the tank and get it cleaned out. So with that being said, we're going to continue to work on this. Uh, and then we'll bring you back. Thank you much. Bye. Okay, welcome back. I, I was able to get some of this, dig some of this out of this fill neck manually. As you can see here, I got this nice size chunk out of this. Uh, just to kind of show this to you. So I'm just going to crush this up. Yeah, you see that? That definitely looks like sugar. At least I hope it's sugar and not something else. And if it's something else, I probably shouldn't be touching it with my bare hands, to be honest with you. Yeah, but that definitely looks like sugar. Looks like sugar in the old gas tank. So I just want to bring you back and show that to you real quick. Well, with that being said, we're going to continue to uh, tear this bad boy down and uh, take a look at the inside of the tank and hopefully the inside of this tank is salvageable uh, and we don't have to replace it if they, have to, if they have to replace it then so be it we'll replace it but uh, we shall see talk to you in a bit bye and welcome back so in the last video uh, we showed you a little bit more of that sugar we were able to get out of the fill neck so once again, just to re, uh, uh, just to kind of reiterate that uh, you know sugar won't dissolve in gasoline; it'll actually settle to the bottom. So although some sugar may have entered this tank, and we'll see what it looks like when we can finally get it dropped out of here, chances are the sugar is all at the bottom. And uh, yeah, it's going to mean we're going to have to clean the tank, and eventually, yeah, we're definitely going to have to replace the pump. That's the reason why we're in here. More than likely, there's if any sugar did get in the tank, it's just you know led into kind of a sludge at the bottom, which may be what's affecting our fuel pressure. But uh, as far as any fuel, any sugar getting any into any lines, if it did, the engine would have burned it up. Um, and also, with sugar being heavier than gas, it would probably have accounted for that really, really cloudy murky uh, fuel that we got out of the fuel rail now that's not to say that we won't have to clean the injectors out but it shouldn't be gasoline in the uh, sugar and gasoline isn't nearly as catastrophic as the uh as kind of one of those urban legends would would lead you to believe it's definitely something you don't want in there and it's clearly somebody had it out for this poor truck and trying to sabotage it but uh you know we'll go on from there so what, we, what we've done so far is disconnect a couple of fittings here. That fitting you see there goes to the charcoal canister. So that's part of the EVAP system. Uh, we've also disconnected this fitting here, which I found along the uh, rail. We use this fitting to go ahead and drain the tank. Uh, we just let it kind of gravity feed out into a couple of one gallon containers. And as it filled up, we would dump that into an appropriate you know, five gallon gas can. Uh, I also had a siphon that was able to fit perfectly inside the o-ring inside this fitting and we were able to use that to kind of manually just siphon as much fuel out of this tank as we could I want to say we probably got about uh, nine ten gallons out of this tank and if you can hear that it's it sounds pretty empty at this point even on this end with this truck being kind of nose down on an incline it should be fairly empty of fuel uh, we started uh, loosening up two straps you have one strap you can see there another strap a little bit further back you can see right where this lights at so we're going to leave that in on the bottom set of threads and we're going to start loosening up that other strap and trying to get this tank to lower down to get the rest of the uh, fittings off because we should still have an, an electrical connector for the fuel pump 
Now we also have this fuel line. Now I've taken this fitting off here. It's just sitting here holding it. But it works the same way as those other fittings we saw up by the fuel uh, by the filler neck. You push in on these little green tabs in this case. This little lock piece will unlock and you can kind of pull the line out. So I've already removed it from the first holder here. And if we can get it out from that holder there and that holder there, we should be able to drop this tank uh, without having to fidget with disconnecting the fuel line from the top of the tank and just remove tank and, and main fuel line all in one piece, or at least that's what we're going to try to do. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let you go and uh, see about getting the rest of this tank dropped out of here. And then when we come back, I'll show you kind of what the inside of that tank looks like and we'll continue on. I'm also going to show you some YouTube tricks I looked up about how to get a locking gas cap off when you don't have the key. It looks fairly straightforward to do. With that being said, I'll let you go and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So in a, in a bunch of example videos, you may see people dropping their fuel tanks. They take the bed off the truck to make getting access to the fuel pump easier. Things of that nature. And if all you have to do is a fuel pump and you have the tools and the facilities to pull the bed off, more power to you. Go for it. Uh, but if you have to drop the tank to clean it like we do, at least on this particular model, and I've seen others do this, where they lo loosen these strap bolts up to the bottom thread to give them access to get to the top of the tank to unfix the fuel line and various connectors. Well, at least on this model truck and this trim level, that didn't work. Dropping these tank straps to the lower thread didn't give you enough room to get to the top of the tank where you see the cover for the fuel pump. The fuel pump sets back here to get those lines off. So you can obviously see we've got the tank dropped, at least from the strap perspective. We got it kind of just sitting on the bottom of a jack stand so it doesn't go all the way to the ground. And you can see how close we actually are to the ground, and that gave us enough room to get the rest of the wiring off. Like the electrical connector to the fuel pump, uh, which is up here. There's one more connector. You see it dangling there, right around where you see that other tank trap. Let me see if I can get a light on it. That stud right there for the other tank strap. You see that line coming down, that connector. That is the connector for the EVAT purge solenoid. Uh, because on this truck, there's your EVAT canister. Mounts on both the gas tank. And I would like to say a special thank you to whatever engineer figured it would be a good idea to put the EVAT canister on top of the gas tank. Because you can imagine if you had to replace that canister, guess what you have to do? You either have to pull the bed off the truck to gain access to it, or you have to drop the tank in order to pull that canister out of there. There's not a way that I can see to get to all those fittings to pop it off and maybe go up over the drive shaft to get it out, but I don't know. That's just a little bit of a rant. Getting that fuel line off was kind of a pain in the rear because it's just hard to get to it even with the clearance that you have here to squeeze that connector. But if you remember earlier, I made mention that we ha happen to have a fuel line connection point right there that we took off to drain the tank. So I just finished unclipping the fuel rail off of the channel, side channel here. So we're going to drop the tank along with this attached fuel line all in one piece. And then when we have it out where we can work on it, then we'll work on getting that fuel line off of that fuel pump. But we've got our electrical disconnected. At this point, we've got our purge, EVAT purge canister line disconnected, and we've got the lines you saw yesterday. So the vent to the tank, uh, actually, what you remember yesterday was broke already. Uh, the main fuel line's disconnected, and it looked like what also was a uh, fresh air line or a purge line for the canister also went up to where the fill neck is and that is disconnected. So it looks like we've got everything out at this point. What we're gonna work on doing is just finishing dropping this tank to the ground and seeing if we can slide and get it out of here. Uh, but with that being said, I'll uh, bring you back in a bit. Thank you very much, bye. 
and welcome back so we got the tank dropped but just fyi for anybody else doing this job even if your truck is jacked up on 20 inch tires like this one is here the very rear of the tank in our case still wouldn't clear the subframe the main filler neck and the vent that you see here as you can see that we had to extend our reach with our jack with a couple blocks and we had to come up about another uh two or so inches to finally pull the tank out so we had to drop the tank while it was on the ground, slide it forward to clear our suspension linkage in the back, and then jack the truck up about another couple inches to finally clear and be able to slide our tank out. Because we're gonna we hit this on the subframe trying to come out of the side and hit this on the subframe, which this makes me sad because that's where our vent piece is broke. So I had to see if it's possible to get another one of these top pieces without having to order a, a whole new tank but uh, we shall see so we're going to get this up to the house where we can take this fuel pump out take a look at the inside of this tank and see if it's even something we can salvage or, or we just have to replace it uh, with that being said i'll uh bring you back in a bit bye and welcome back so you can see we've got our fuel line off of our fuel pump and what holds that line on is just one of these little clips here. So you just kind of have to get in there. I, I did it with a pocket screwdriver. Worked this little C-clip out. And this line will actually come off of our main fuel pump fitting here. We went ahead and used some compressed air and just blew all the junk away from this. Now we're going to get in here and see what kind of cleaning, if any, we need to do to this tank. And you can yeah might be able to see little bits of crystallized sugar still inside the main feed line but uh, we went ahead and bought uh, i've seen a lot of individuals uh knock this lock ring loose with just like a hammer and chisel things of that nature uh be mindful that you're still working with gas here although this tank is mostly empty uh it's still going to contain a fair bit of fumes uh, so to each their own uh, but i would strongly suggest if you're going to knock this off with a punch that it be a brass punch and not steel uh, you definitely don't want to cause a spark when trying to get this retaining lock off because uh, i'll pose a question to you what's more dangerous a tank full of gas liquid gas or a tank full of fumes just something to ponder again uh, we went ahead and just purchased uh, the actual lock removal ring tool uh, they're pretty inexpensive you can get them for about twenty dollars on amazon uh, and if you own more than one of a particular make of vehicle then there's a pretty good bet that that tool could you know very well come in handy for more than just one use but i want to say this one was about 22 dollars, and I'll, I'll put a link to the the actual person i purchased it from it wasn't it's fairly inexpensive and you'll see the tabs on this particular tool just line up with the little tabs and the lock ring itself and you can see it locks in place and then you just use a half inch breaker bar to be able to rotate that ring and unlock it so i'm going to go ahead and take care of that now when we get this fuel pump out we'll take a look at uh, what horrors may be laying uh, on the ins inside of this it's really going to depend on whether or not any of that sugar made its way into the actual tank itself i've also been looking at this piece over here where somebody broke the vent pipe off uh, it doesn't look like this comes out too easily this may be just permanently bonded to the tank if that's the case then when we make the evaluation whether we're going to keep this tank or not um, that'll play a factor into whether or not we replace it but i'm going to go ahead and uh, knock this lock ring loose and when we get this fuel pump out of here we'll take a look thank you much okay welcome back you see we got our pump out again breaking that lock ring loose is pretty easy to do with the, the actual tool meant to do it the lock ring itself is in pretty good shape no really sign of rust on it at all so we'll definitely reuse it uh, the pump itself this pump looks like this has been changed out once before I don't see any OEM part numbers on it that would tell me whether it's an actual Chrysler unit or another aftermarket unit but hopefully you can see that down in there see that goop that crud that's uh, definitely some of the sugar so some of the sugar did make its way in to the bottom of the pump 
and it should have been caught by that filter but it would have easily started to clog that filter up because again sugar does not dissolve gasoline and to show you that again this is some of the stuff we pulled out of the actual tank you can see as the gasoline is evaporating it's just leaving the sugar behind you can see that inside the tank itself you see all those little bits of what looks like yellow or brown if I grab some of this and I do have gloves on there we go you can see that right there all that sugar and again it's not going to dissolve it's just going to settle to the bottom of the tank that you see it here so at a minimum we will have to clean this tank and definitely put the replacement pump in it let's see what else we got yeah we got piles of it at various spots there's some more of it it's definitely definitely don't want to be putting this in your coffee or beverage of choice yeah you can just kind of see it down in there more chunks so at a minimum what I'd like to do is again investigate whether we can get this replacement piece it may not be possible it looks like these are kind of fused in with the tank if we have to we'll replace the tank and at a minimum I'd like to get these hoses replaced they've still got the original part numbers on them, so they're original to the truck and they're actually starting to grade you can actually rub your finger over these and well, the writing and you know a small bit of the outside uh, rubber compound itself is starting to come off it's just with age they're just starting to deteriorate so i'd like to get that line replaced and that line replaced and possibly the filler neck as well i did look up and getting an aftermarket tank for this vehicle is uh, actually fairly inexpensive so it's not too bad of a sticker shock that i originally thought when i looked up the cost of an actual oem tank uh, another item that we're going to want to look into since we have access to it is the purge canister itself um, since you can see since they decided to mount this one to the top of the gas tank for you know who knows whatever reason making it extremely difficult to get to since we have access to it uh, we might as well go ahead and check it out make sure it doesn't have any air leaks on it that it's not cracked if it's reasonably inexpensive to replace it you know, we'll go ahead and replace this as well since we're here that way we put this tank up there we're done we don't have to drop it again especially if you were to clean this tank and get it working and remount it and then just have to drop it all over again uh, to chase down an evap problem okay with that being said like i said we're going to clean this tank and then we'll bring it back as for why how someone decided to put sugar in the tank of this thing who knows as i showed you earlier it came straight from auction that way it also had a locking gas cap already on it which means either the individual who stole it since it was reported as a theft recovery either the individual who stole it put sugar in the tank and then put a locking gas cap on it to make it difficult for somebody to discover what they did or perhaps maybe the original owner did it since again the original owner would have also potentially had the keys to the locking cap but who knows we need to get that locking cap off and that's fairly straightforward i won't include that here there's plenty of other videos out there that show that those are fairly easy to remove they're actually not really a security piece at all with that being said i'll uh i'll tell you later bye and welcome back so last we spoke we got the fuel pump out and saw the uh, sugar carnage that waited us below uh, since then I did research if it was possible to get an aftermarket tank a little bit cheaper than an OEM and unfortunately no uh, I don't really find very many aftermarket tanks I can find the OEM one but it's just too cost prohibitive to replace it besides nothing's wrong with this tank it doesn't currently leak the only issue that we have is as you remember that uh, vent port for the vent tube that goes up to the fill neck was broke off so since we have the piece that broke off I'm going to see if I can reattach it if not it's not really a biggie from the way I see it since that is just a vent 
it will vent just fine whether it vents from there or vents up properly or it should vent up by the filler neck uh, this hose as well I couldn't find a part number on it it looks like it's probably just bolt tubing but it does have this nice factory molded u-bend on it that goes into our vapor canister this hose it looked a little bit rough but as you clean it up it looks perfectly fine uh, since, so since I couldn't find this one and this one looks good we'll just leave this one as is I did go ahead and order a new vapor canister in since this one is a bear to get to I don't want to reassemble this and have to chase, chase down an evap leak and find that related to this canister in some way shape or form so since it, since the tanks down we have access to it we're going to go ahead and replace it yeah it's a little bit of a, probably a frivolous spend because we haven't actually condemned this part but again it's just we're doing it because we've got access to it at this point so we've uh, drained out the remaining of the fuel uh, it is bone dry at this point uh, went through it with a lot of compressed air and a lot of shop towels and cleaned out all the little granulars of sugar that we could find it's back down to being what it should be on the inside of this tank which is right now just a little bit of gas fumes and some plastic uh, you might want to see some of the carnage that we were able to get out of this tank you can see a lot of it right here amongst again the many shop towels you see a nice little pile of sugar here you can see some of the nice bigger pieces that are starting to fall apart here this one was actually inside of the fill neck once we took the uh, filler hose off uh, and I was able to find that one so we do have a new filler neck hose coming in again mainly because it was getting kind of hard and uh, brittle but as well as it being full of sugar so we definitely wanted to get that replaced so that'll be coming in uh, again the VVAP canister will be coming in so again that's a nice little chunk of sugar that you see there so once we get those pieces in then we'll uh, go ahead and uh, get this tank get this canister out of here get this replaced do a little bit of a little bit more cleanup on the top of this tank and we'll get everything reassembled uh, and then we'll uh, stick it in our truck and see if it fixes our fuel pressure issue. It may not fix the overall uh, running slash start issue that we have, but this is definitely something that needed to be addressed. Again, couldn't fathom, can only theory at this point as to why and who uh, decided to uh, sweeten their gasoline with a little bit of sugar. Yeah, again, not sure. Uh, but just to reiterate it again, as you saw, it's, uh, you know, sugar won't dissolve in gasoline, although it is still a pain to have to drop the tank and clean it and replace the pump and yada, yada, yada. But with that being said, I'll cut the video at this point. We're going to wait for some parts to come in, and then we'll pick this back up kind of where we left off. But with that being said, uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we're trying to get channel up to our little milestone count. Uh, if you haven't done so already and you could do that, that'd be much appreciative. You know, other than that, stay tuned for the next one and we'll see what we run into next. Thank you much. Bye.